men and women and their families who make up this military today are the best I've ever served with. These are the faces of war, and after more than a decade of two wars, they are now beginning to come home. There was a sacred oath made to those who served by those who were served. The promise? We will wait and pray for them till they all come home. And if they are broken, we will fix them as best we can. And we'll do it with the help of their families. A Greater Cleveland Fisher House keeps that promise. We are a force that has been pushed and grown and changed and stretched and over 5,500 have sacrificed their lives and there are tens of thousands uh, who are physically wounded and there are hundreds of thousands who suffer the stress, uh, the post-traumatic stress, the traumatic brain injury, mild to serious, many of whom, quite frankly, we haven't even identified yet. There are those who are seriously physically wounded and suffer the invisible wounds of war. Josh Summers, six foot three, 26 years old, Ashland, Ohio, was on his first tour in Iraq with the 101st Airborne. He was hit in the back of his helmet with a rocket-propelled grenade. A brain injury. <laughs> I don't remember anything else. Josh was in a coma for eight months in Tampa. His mother, Lisa, stayed in a Fisher house there. I took him to the Fisher house a lot when we were in Tampa. Josh was again transported to Cleveland. There is no Fisher house here. The VA put mom up in a hotel downtown. It would have been nice to have a support system meet the front, you know, people that are going through the same thing, kind of give you somebody to talk to rather than four walls in a hotel. Lisa was with Josh every day of almost a year of treatment at the Cleveland VA. Josh went home to Ashland, Ohio to a hero's welcome and then unknown years of therapy behind closed doors. There is nothing ordinary about war. Simply put, war is dangerous. War plays havoc with the brain, the mind, the psyche, perception, and the personal relationships of the men and women who are in it or near it. This exercise is designed to improve your attention. Margot Vare, 26, enlisted to play on the all-Army soccer team because it could lead to the Olympics. She didn't compete for the gold. She settled for the purple. A purple heart. It was December 6th and that's when I got hit as a gunner by an IED and my head was thrown back into the turret and it hit that soft spot. Her concussion was severe. Three months later on patrol, her best friend was killed right behind her by an improvised explosive device. Traumatic brain injury was the result for Margot. She was medevac to Germany. I'm always staring at stuff, just not in the moment and I don't and then the TBI, I mean, who knows what's going on with my brain, but having a 24-hour headache doesn't help anything. Margot had brain surgery to cut the nerves that carried the pain. She is now 100% disabled living in Kent, Ohio, with her veteran husband. She says her computer, that's her head, is broken. She dropped out of college and is studying to be a chef. Her service dog, Mush, is her closest ally and buffers her from the world around her. Their lives have changed forever and sometimes in ways, actually in many cases in ways they don't even know yet. Leticia Bowen is from Cleveland and now 33. She drove tour buses before the army trained and sent her to Tikrit, Iraq in 2004 as a convoy driver. She drove more than 12,000 miles, playing roulette with explosives in the roads and ambushes on the roads. It was traumatic. Today, she is 70% disabled with depression, anxiety, migraines, and post-traumatic stress. I, I go to school, I go to work, I come home, but when I come home from drive, I am like exhausted because I just cannot stand driving. These, too, are the scenes and faces of war. They are not often or easily recognized. They are the wives, husband, children, the families. War separates families. The specter of death or injury, physical and psychological, has the radiating concussion of an explosive to soldier and family.
I consider her my sister. I mean, it's, I mean, we've been through some stuff that normal people don't have to go through, mm -hmm. you know, and that's our bond. Leticia may be Frank DiLorenzo's sister in war and its aftermath, but the disabled Rexville Army Specialist has a wife and five children. Frank works for the Wounded Warriors program. He was a firefighter paramedic in Bath, Ohio, before his reserve unit was deployed and attached to the 1st Infantry Division in Iraq. He saw a lot, including children used by insurgents to shoot, carry out suicide bombings, and set roadside bombs. I can't go and uh, go to a public area and a park even doesn't terrify me, but it, it, my anxiety level goes up. Um, I, kids alone t frighten me. I can deal with it over there, just can't deal with it here. His constant companion is his service dog, Nina. Frank was medevac to Fort Bragg. His family was with him for weeks there. Fisher House gave us a, a room. It's a little apartment almost. Kids were instantly comfort there. They had their own room. We had a community kitchen, which was great because we could go and get them food. And for me, getting my treatment and being able to come back and relax with them some instead of in a hospital room or a hotel room was great. His severe ankle wound was surgically repaired. He was treated for injuries caused by bomb concussions. And his most debilitating wound, post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, I could be driving down the road and being boxed in by two cars on either side of me. Your heart starts pounding. You know, you feel like you're almost having a heart attack. He shuts down. He shuts down completely. He used to be loving, affectionate, want to do stuff with his family, want to do stuff in general, and that's all changed. He's a different person. He can't handle things. And it's, it, it, and it, it's horrible because I, I love my kids dearly. I'd love to do everything with them. When you see a kid crying over this, or not understanding why dad can't communicate. That's probably the hardest thing. You know, I can, I can deal with my wife being upset. I can't deal with my kids being upset. I know how he was before, and I, I tried to see that in him again. She remembers the way he was. Frank remembers the way his family was at Fisher House. The love that my family felt at the Fisher House was amazing. I mean, what, why not give that to someone here that needs it at this time, too? The gratitude for the Fisher House is echoed from coast to coast and overseas as well. And when you come in after it's been such a tough day and you have a chance to sit with some of the other families and, and share your pain or your grief or your hope, um, it, it is a really, really healing and, and beautiful experience. Wendy, an Air Force captain, sits with her mom in a Fisher House as she's treated for the shrapnel and severe leg injuries from an improvised bomb. Stacy's son, Gerald, was an Army tank driver. A penetration explosive cost him a limb, extensive burns, and spinal cord function. It's not like I had a bunch of money saved up or anything, you know? And we couldn't have done it without. We would have done it. I would have lived in my car, whatever I had to do. But it definitely makes the whole healing process and everything better. The Cleveland VA is the third largest in the U.S. It's ranked number one in the nation for its eight centers of excellence. A Greater Cleveland Fisher House would not only be used for patients of the VA, but by the families of veteran patients being treated at the Cleveland Clinic, University Hospitals, Metro, and any other specialty hospital. Today, deployments have been shortened to nine months. Our troops are now being steadily drawn down. They are coming home. And if they are broken, we will fix them as best we can, with the help of their families. Anything I can do for the Fisher House, they're amazing. Josh's mom will help because a promise was made, and it must be kept. The Greater Cleveland Fisher House keeps that vow. Put a face on it. Put a family in it. Help fix those who are broken as best we can.